Right. Well, there's in fact bigger problems, to be honest, much bigger problems. There is in fact a new axis of evil. It's uh, Russia, China, Iran, three brutal authoritarian regimes, all supporting each other, by the way. Iran just sending uh, weapons to Russia to help uh, fight in Ukraine, for instance. All supporting each other and each at war with freedom and democracies around the world, against Ukraine in Europe, against Taiwan in Asia, against Israel in the Middle East. Now, that's frightening enough, and not un enough people understand how big this threat is. But what really worries me is that we have institutions supposedly devoted to, you know, safeguarding peace, but in effect helping this axis of evil. Now, you take the United Nations. Its Security Council won't help Ukraine, won't help defend it, because two of the five permanent members with a veto vote on that Security Council are Russia, the evader, and the Chinese dictatorship, its ally. And now, Another example, the UN Special Coordinator has expressed deep concern that another democracy, this time Israel, killed the head of the, of the Islamic uh, Jihad, a terrorist leader, he's a terrorist leader in charge of the Islamic Jihad's rockets, killed him in a missile attack last week that had Islamic Jihad, which is backed and armed by Iran, fire more than 350 rockets as Israeli cities. Luckily, most were shot down. Some even misfired and fell straight back down the Palestinians and killed uh, several civilians. And that was, of course, blamed on Israel too. Joining me is former Labor MP Michael Danby, who is chairman of the Parliamentary Joint Committee on Foreign Affairs, Defence and Trade. Michael Danby, thanks for your time. The UN representative, right, Evening, deeply Ed. regrets the killing of a terrorist leader of Islamic Jihad. I mean, should he regret it? Australia officially classifies Palestinian Islamic Jihad as a terrorist organisation. Uh, the UN uh, official didn't seem to be professional or neutral uh, in doing this um, when they killed the Iranian proxy leader, the Israelis, in, in Gaza. And I didn't notice similar statements from him or any other UN official when America righteously, under President Biden, recently uh, killed uh, the... Uh, al-Qaeda leader al-Zahiri, or when President Trump killed the uh, uh, ISIS leader al-Baghdadi. Now, those were the right things to do, but you can't apply a law to one country and not to the others. But you're dead right, Andrew. What we're getting into is the late 1930s game uh, at the League of Nations where they failed Japanese imperialism at the time, Italian imperialism in Africa, and um, they say nothing. Uh, they stand there and condemn the, the democracies like Israel defending itself. It's unviable and it's bringing discredit on the United Nations. They should stand up for uh, um, individuals in, in Ukraine and uh, Taiwan, but again, silence. Uh, and you neglected to say the League of Nations is also uh, helpless in uh, trying to stop... Uh... Uh, Hitler, particularly when he took over uh, Austria and then took over uh, German part, uh, German speaking parts of the uh, of Czechoslovakia, saying, "Well, they're German territories, just like China saying, well, Taiwan's that's a Chinese territory." Um, another example: institutions that we think, oh, well, they're going to make the world safer for us, betraying us. Amnesty International this time. It also seems captured by the left. It has accused Ukrainian forces in a report last week of putting civilians in harm's way by establishing bases and operating weapon systems in populated residential areas, including schools and hospitals. It even said, oh, how dare Ukrainian soldiers eat at two hospitals? Well, where else were they going to get their meal in the middle of a war zone? Uh, Amnesty International has been heavily criticised for this. The head of its Ukrainian officers resigned in protest. What's the fuss here? This, this is nuts. I mean, when did Amnesty, that used to defend prisoners of conscience like Dr Zakharov in Russia, develop a mission as a geostrategist uh, and also as a, a think tank on international affairs? They really lost their focus. They really lost their mission. Um, and I think what's happened is people have worked out that they can't be successful in politics in Italy or in the UK, etc. So they've taken over worthy institutions like Amnesty. The woke have taken them over. Uh, human 
Human Rights Watch in the United States. And what they do is they propagate their world vision that they could never get elected to in any parliament or congress in their own country. So it's, it's a terrible misuse of... I, I'm telling to those people in Human Rights Watch and Amnesty, there are wonderful people in uh, North Korea or China uh, or Iran that could do with your support. Instead, silence and, um, you know... <laughs> complaining about a terrorist leader being killed. Well, I have to say Amnesty International has been rather shocked by the blowback and has pointed out what should never have needed pointing out, should have been his initial report. Actually, we don't excuse the Russians for causing the war and putting these people in harm's way in the first place. Why? Why it needed reminding... And the Ukrainians have just, evacuated so many... Me. The yeah, Ukrainians have been and evacuating all these poor what people as much as they can. Leave the How dare they accuse them? Well, it's, if, if they're going to fight it's it as, as Amnesty wants, <laughs> is they've got to leave the cities for Russia to invade. I mean, it's just nuts to me. Yeah, fight Michael them. Damien, their their so advice was, I saw the Italian woman, they have to fight them from the woods. <laughs> oh, seriously. So out in the open where they're a nice target for the Russians... Really, how stupid can exactly these people more. be? Michael Danby, thanks for your time. Really appreciate it.